Lutheran Church here in Stillwater, Minnesota. We are so glad that you're joining us today and we invite you to come again. Our worship services are 8 o'clock traditional here in the sanctuary, online pre-recorded as you've discovered, and 9.30 contemporary in our larger space, the CLC. All are welcome. This week we're very excited to have Vacation Bible School, so we will be blessing our many volunteers. We have 120 kids registered and ready to go to learn about Jesus with the theme of scuba, diving into a friendship with God. So we hope and pray that you will keep that ministry in your prayers. And today we are also going to be hearing from our college students who went on a college aged mission trip to Chicago this summer and earlier uh, in June. They worked with Habitat for Humanity as well as other organizations and it was extremely life changing. We also welcome a couple of new members this week to our saviors, Brian and Jeannie Kokel. They moved here recently in June from Montana and they, they live at the lakes and we're so delighted to welcome them into their new, new church family. If you are interested in joining our saviors, you can join at any time. Simply contact me at Karna, K-A-R-N-A, at O-S-L-C, stillwater.org. You can also sign up for our weekly e-news, and that is at info, I-N-F-O, at O-S-L-C, stillwater.org, and hear a weekly devotion and all sorts of happenings and updates of programs here at Our Saviors. Welcome. We're so delighted that you are here, and we begin with our confession of sin and God's forgiveness to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in singing. Yeah. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its needs with the life that comes only from you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. saviors and guests. Uh, my name is Chad Larson and I'm the director of Youth and Family Ministry here at Our Saviors and today we have the opportunity to, to talk with you about our recent college age mission trip to Chicago um, and it was wonderful. I can't wait for you to hear about it but before we do that let us start with our uh, reading from Romans 12 today. This is Romans 12 1 through 18. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment 
in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of you has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously, generously to, or if it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Here ends the reading. Well, again, as I mentioned, uh, way back in June, um, we had the opportunity uh, to go and serve the people of Chicago. Now, this is a wonderful opportunity. One, because any opportunity to serve is a wonderful opportunity, and we want to take advantage of that. But two, this is the start of a ministry here at Our Savers that is brand new, obviously. And so um, this is our first college age mission trip, and I'm excited for you to hear from some of our college students uh, on what that looks like for them and their experiences. Um, but before we do that, I just want to talk about this scripture um, and how this scripture kind of came into play as we as we were on our trip and as we experienced the, the love and forgiveness and grace of Jesus in Chicago in working with God's people. Um, one of the things that we really focused on and talked about for this trip, and it was actually our theme, was uh, this theme of connection. So what does it mean to connect with God in various parts of our lives? What does it mean um, to, be, to be close with God or feel connected to God? Um, particularly the last day that we were there, we talked about what it meant to connect with God um, in the world. So in other words, being in the world, but not of the world. And so uh, Paul here in Romans 12 really, really kind of labels and talks with that in, about that in verse 2. He says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to attest and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so as we continue uh, to seek God, and as we did on this trip, uh, and as we continue to connect with God, uh, Paul here calls us not to conform to the patterns of this world, right? Not to conform to those things that are of the world uh, or that are in the world. Um, and so... As we looked at this, uh, this, this opportunity for us to serve, we went into it with that lens. And so what does it mean to connect with God through our hardship? What does it mean to connect with God when the world is telling us to disconnect and go and do something else? What does it mean to connect with God when we are experiencing joy and excitement um, and life is going really, really well? What does it mean to stay connected? You see, um, in the book of Romans, uh, the context here uh, is really a church that is divided. And Paul is kind of coming in and talking about this new life in Christ, this kind of new humanity in Christ. And this was a church that was divided because people had the opinion, 
or the, the mindset that um, you had to follow a certain law in order to, to be with God or to be connected with God. And Paul comes in and kind of says, well, no, it's not about that. It's not about what we do, but it's about what has already been done and talked about righteousness um, and justification by faith. And so um, uh, he brings up in here that there are different there are different uh, people with different gifts. There are these different gifts. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Prophesying, if that's what it is, then do it. Do it uh, with, uh, in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. So in other words, he's saying we all have these gifts. We all have something to bring to the table and uh, to, to, to serve with or to uh, uh, meet other people with, right? And uh, as we went through this uh, experience, as we experienced these different places, um, it was wonderful to see these certain gifts come out in our college age students and us as a group kind of coming together uh, with our gifts and uh, join, joining those together to really use them um, in God's ministry. But what does that look like though? Um, it might be something that's easier for us to do uh, because we are focused on connecting with God um, we are focused on responding to God in worship when we are on the mission trip. But what does it look like when we return? Um, what does it look like for all of us when we, uh, we might come to church and we might have this kind of recharge or we might have these experiences that kind of are mountaintop experiences that are a recharge for us. But what does it really look like when we fall back into our routines, when the world says, this is what we want. This is what needs to happen. Um, and we kind of look, uh, look to that as opposed to looking, uh, continuing looking to God for that guidance. What does it really look like for us to stay connected with God, to stay in the midst of this love and grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ? And Paul, in this book of Romans, really talks about that and lays it out um, to a divided church with this hope that we will all become united together in Christ. And that, that, us, that we are united because we are united, we can then go and do these things like prophesy or serve or uh, give generously um, and show mercy to do it cheerfully. And so Paul goes on to talk about that how love must be sincere, that we hate what is evil and we cling to what is good. And that really speaks to us also as we, keep, we confront in our world and especially in our society, um, uh, this division and this, this opportunity for us to, to separate ourselves from each other because of certain things. And uh, we all have different opinions. Well, we all have different ways or different things that we do to live our lives. But Paul here is really talking about the importance of uh, in the beginning that we seek the kingdom of God, right? And that, um, and that we know and we practice this connection that we have with God uh, and with each other. Because when we practice that, when we are unified, man, there is so much that we can do. On this mission trip, I totally saw that. Um, I saw our students, all of us, coming together, enjoying each other's company and fellowship, and experiencing Christ through service, through worship, through fellowship with each other. Um, and it's my hope that through this time that you hear our students speaking, that you understand what that really looked like uh, in our experience in Chicago. And so uh, I want to end by saying thank you so much for the support that you've given uh, us as we have traveled to Chicago, as we have planned, and now as we come back to, to really live out this experience here in our congregation and in our lives and in the world, we can't wait till the next one, and we're excited to talk to you about that more. Hi, my name is Chloe Knudsen, and I was one of the participants on this year's college mission trip to Chicago, Illinois. I have been on three high school mission trips and now one college one and this one, this trip really put things into perspective and also challenged a lot of my current beliefs. Before I went on this trip, I was struggling a lot to connect with God in a way that I had felt I had in high school when I was a part of the high school youth ministry here at Our Saviors. College comes with a lot of distractions, some good and some bad, and despite being in a women's ministry every Thursday night, and going to a couple different church services, 
around um, my college community. I felt that my relationship with God lacked vulnerability and it also lacked trust. I wasn't turning to God with my struggles and even more so I felt like I couldn't go to him, couldn't go to God with them. Our first service project on the Friday that we were um, there, we served at a place called Inglewood Family Outreach. For those of you who haven't heard of Inglewood before, it is known as one of the highest crime neighborhoods in Chicago. It is also the least diverse neighborhood in Chicago with 99% of its population being black. When we first arrived at the Family Outreach Center, we met Daniel, the man who led the organization, who confessed to us that he had tried to quit multiple times, but God had other plans for him. Daniel led us through an hour-long talk, an exercise called How to Help Without Hurting. He explained to us that those who look from outside in at people who are experiencing poverty or homelessness often view their situation as a lack of something in economic terms, maybe a lack of education or a lack of financial security. However, those who actually live in poverty and experience it on a day-to-day -day basis frame their struggles as a lack of something in terms that are relational, in relational terms. Daniel highlighted that individuals in poverty often have broken relationships with creation, with institutions, with people, and most importantly, with God. He demonstrated this by pointing out how much trash is on the streets and lawns in Inglewood. Everywhere you look, there is trash littered everywhere, but why should those who live there care about creation when no one bothers to care about them or form relationships with them? It is so easy to fall into spiritual hopelessness it feels like more so than ever that the brokenness and sins of humans are rampant in our world. You look around and it feels like everyone is getting sick and the whole world is at war. The verse for today and one that Chad highlighted in our nightly devotions is Romans 12:2, and it says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. As we look around the world, it is easy to see broken relationships with God and others. And because of our sinful nature as humans, it is easy to be distracted by what the world demands of us and what its desires are for us. What God calls us to do, however, is to connect with him in the midst of our brokenness and turn to him with our struggles. He calls us to a relationship with him because as soon as we put God first, everything else falls into place. Luke, the pastor at the church we stayed at, told us that people... When people think of Chicago, they often think of its high crime, violence, and its sinful nature. He told us that the issues in Chicago are magnified, multiplied, and intensified because there are simply more people there. And where there are more people, there's also more sin. But because there are more people, the beauty that is there and the beauty that God puts in his people are also magnified, multiplied, and intensified. There are two sides to the same coin. When we were in Inglewood, we participated in a prayer walk, and everyone we met was so unbelievably kind and just wanted the best for their community. One man stopped to pray with us and prayed that he would hear children laughing and dancing and playing in the streets. We were walking around in a community that despite all of its brokenness was filled with so much good and so much hope. God doesn't expect us to be perfect. He knows we are sinful people. He just expects us to turn to him in our struggles, ask for forgiveness, and he will do the rest. That is the renewal that we are all called to. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sam Anderson, and I was able to go on the 2024 college mission trip to Chicago. Um, and I'm so thankful that I was able to go uh, because, you know, ever since I graduated college or high school, um, back in 2021, I've been waiting to go on another mission trip, and I'm, it just it finally came. So... Um, I was so happy to be able to go, and I hope it continues for years to come. Um, but for in Chicago, um, so the first thing we did when we got there uh, was we went to Englewood, and we went to the New Life Family Outreach, and there we were uh, repairing the, and repainting their fence, um, as well as doing some yard work um, and making connections there uh, with the young, younger ones. Um, and, and we also went on a prayer walk uh, around the neighborhood of Englewood, and that was just such an eye-opening experience, and I will just never forget that um, forever. Um, and so somebody that I met, um, on the, or our, our whole group met on the uh, mission trip was the janitor for the church that we were staying at, and his name was Marcus. Um, and Marcus was just such an amazing guy. Um, 
he was homeless for 40 years, and um, he has now um, turned his life to Christ, and um, he, he's worked in the church for 13 years um, and counting. And, you know, every word that came out of his mouth was just speaking the word of God. And, you know, he was just always so positive. He just, he, he said what it was. And, you know, I'm just so thankful that I was able to meet him. Um, and, yeah, I hope this college mission trip turns continues for years to come because yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. So my name is Charlie Rognes and I had the privilege of going on um, our first ever college mission trip here at Our Saviors. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to this church for all that supported us on this trip, whether it was through prayer, joyful wishes, or financial donations. It is a blessing to have such an incredible church that has consistently been so supportive of the youth program. I am truly thankful every day for how this church has helped foster me into the individual I am today. Um, through this trip, God intentionally designed our paths to cross with individuals who have expanded our understanding on the power of God and how we can change the world through Him. We have the privilege of going to Englewood to serve at the outreach ministry our first day. We sat with the director, Daniel, who guided us through a discussion about the struggles individuals experiencing homelessness or extreme poverty face. While it is easy to consider the problems that result from lacking resources like food, water, money, and other necessities, 90% of the problems individuals experiencing extreme poverty face are due to the societal inequalities and a lack of relational connection. We as well discussed the value and the difference between relief and rehabilitation, emphasizing the need to restore the dignity of people experiencing homelessness. This was a strong way to start off the trip, as it highlighted the need for us to really focus on the intentionality in our relational ministry. On this trip, we were able to engage in such strong relational ministry, like as we sat at the crib, which served youth homelessness. We sat around for hours playing games and having conversations with individuals experiencing homelessness that were our ages. We shared such good laughs that were also handed such good laughs. That week, we also handed out lunches, built homes, and did landscaping, which all had an emphasis in relational ministry. Englewood has a reputation of being the most high crime, gang, violent area in Chicago. As we walked around and prayed with individuals of the community, I was overwhelmed by how much hope I saw for the city. As we painted fences of the outreach and walked around picking up trash, it felt so powerful to help foster hope as we communicated a message of worthiness for the community. With all the trash and abandonment to the appearance of the community, Daniel questioned, well, why should they care? No one else does. Why should they take action to invest in a better life if everyone de dehumanizes them by looking at them from a deficit lens? As we get ready to leave our colleges and venture into the real world, I found the lessons from the experience crucial when considering how to lead this world and fall in the footsteps of Jesus by reaching out a hand to those in need. We cannot forget about those marginalized and it is our job as Christians to clarify the good in the world when sometimes it can be lost. In Jeremiah 29 11, Jesus is calling us to the city. Daniel shared that where there are churches, where the churches are stronger, the gangs are weaker. Christians are needed within the city and we directly saw the impact made. Pastor Lute left a message for us to come back with. The word needs to be spread that we cannot demonize the city. Chicago is not a bad place as where there are people, there is sin. Chicago is not a darker place and we saw it before our own eyes. The most powerful insight that I have gained from this trip is that we truly do, do have such a good God and I'm so inspired to live my life through him. This trip provided me with such clarity and why I want to be committed to a faith, to a life with Christ. As we are on this trip, the presence of God is so apparent. We had the privilege of speaking with Marcus, an individual who experienced homelessness and addiction for 40 years. It was so powerful to hear his story of how Jesus used Pastor Luke to lead him to Christ. Marcus now lives a better life. Mar Marcus explained that everything he does is now for Christ and he will never look back. Every conversation we had with Marcus, he redirected back to the goodness of God. 
Marcus was persistent that all he cared about was the goodness of God. He said, I don't want to talk about politics or sports or none of that. All I want to talk about is Jesus. That joy that Marcus feels is the joy that we all felt being close to the Lord. And this joy is a much higher kind of joy than we can get from anything else in the world. On this trip, our connection to God is so strong and we experience such joy. Chad's messages throughout the trip were focused on how to continue to stay connected as we venture into the world. We talked about how we must be in this world in this world, and not of this world. When we are on these trips and are able to stop thinking about about stuff that is of this world, that is where we feel true joy. This is the aspect that truly transformed me. I experienced such joy in these trips that I crave throughout the year. I internalized Chad's message and really reflected on how I can connect, continue to stay connected as I venture home. I feel like as soon as I enter those vans, it is so easy to see God all around us. Therefore, in order to keep my keep with my faith, faith, I must look for God in all I do, just like I do on those trips. In the way that Marcus would. As I've tried to find joy in the past, I've gotten the idea totally wrong. I, real, I try to live my life to the fullest, but in reality, this was worshipping the God of busyness. For as long as I can remember, I've been in an unhealthy habit of packing my schedule to the rim until I completely exhaust myself. I experience a sense of guilt for taking a break in my day and hold so much pressure on myself. In reality, a good life to live is a life where God is at the center, and I can find joy in every minute by watching God perform goodness in my life. In all reality, the more time I leave for God, the more content I feel with right now. This trip has completely transformed my perspective and has given me such joy as I come home. Now I leave space for God and worship Him in all I do rather than busyness. I want to encourage everyone that it is never too late to commit to this life. All are welcome to God's kingdom. I know Marcus would agree that there is no higher joy that you can experience in your life. Andre, Andre, thank you so much for being our interpreter on our mission trip to Guatemala. This is so cool to be at this Mayan ruin site. Uh, what is this over here? So these are estelas. Estelas. Uh, Mayans would build one of these each uh, every five years, and they would uh, represent uh, whatever they wanted. They would, and on the sides, they would write. Cool. So these are hieroglyphics. Yep, these are hieroglyphics, and you read them from left to right in a zigzag pattern. Wow. Can you read it? And yes. It says your vanco ad has been uh, through. What? You mean they used vanco back then too? I guess so. So the online offering just went through to our saviors? Yep. That's amazing. of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the world that God loves. Lord, thank you for the gift of serving you and putting our faith into action. Let us care for the neighbor in need that lives close as well as to the ends of the earth. Thank you for our college students that share of their time to travel to Chicago and serve with Habitat for Humanity. Give all of us hearts to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for a vacation Bible school. Let this entire week be filled with your Holy Spirit's inspiration. Bless each participant and volunteer. Let seeds of faith grow through the impact of this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, we care about this beautiful planet that you have made. As there are areas of the world that are experiencing violent storms, famine, and needs, send your peace and your aid. May we do our best to care for this world that future generations will flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, let there be peace on earth where there is conflict, war, and division. Send your love. Bring peace, especially to the Holy Land, Sudan, Ethiopia, Ukraine, and Haiti. Let there also be peace in our own country. May this congregation also be a vessel of your love and peace throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for all of our mission partners, including our Anuak friends, Habitat for Humanity, Open Hands Midway, Mission Jamaica, Malafu, Tanzania, Zakuleo, Guatemala. Strengthen our partnerships locally, regionally, and internationally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, send your healing to all in need. Audrey Reed, Bethany Lewis, Leslie Green, Mitch Christopher, Susan and Terry Fredrickson, Lori Burns, the Lyons family, Steve Clary, Tara Lestock, Andy Nelson, Steve Glazer, Meredith Kasky, Kim Roval, Kathy Kramer, Nate Trepanier, Chris Laminski, Lee Johnson, Pastor Maury Hagen, Carol and Larry Tossett. And those in hospice, Lord, we lift up to you and pray your peace and comfort. Perry Price, Doris Wallama, and Darla Menson. And for those grieving the death of Jerry Griffith and Nancy Whalen, Lord, we just lift them up into your arms of love. All of these prayers we lift up to you, O Lord, knowing that you hear us and that you love us. Amen. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We have several birthdays and anniversaries in our congregation this week. Birthdays include Jay Lee Coy, Carol Whitcomb, Elliot Jackson, Ezra Larivere, Evelyn Socora, Jesse Kasky, Matthew Fiestad, Audrey Reed, Elizabeth Klein, Maggie Noah, and Oscar Noah. And anniversaries include Paul and Myrna Renslow and Brian and Karna Moskalik. So let's say prayers for those celebrating life milestones. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace, courage and every endeavor. Lift your eyes to see God's face and God's grace forever. May the Lord, mighty Lord, bless and keep you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.